Ladies, gentlemen, welcome to my tier 4 challenges guide for the lowrider missions. Unlike the other contact missions, these are done with two or four players. We'll be starting off with a two player mission. It's a G thing. This one really kind of comes down to bum rushing yourself into LSIA, throwing a sticky bomb at the van where Gerald is held up in, and then just getting him in a car and driving off again. There really isn't much of a strategy other than doing just that. For the simple reason, reason that if you wait any longer you're going to get overwhelmed with cops and get shot to hell and if you want to lose the cops easily keep an eye on the screen i'll show you cheeky little routes that will allow you to lose them easily and also safely Lower the NV is definitely one of the easier missions because you have a sniper team and also a ground team. The sniper team honestly is going to be doing the predominant amount of heavy lifting here. Also, you want to make sure that you are in good communication with your teammate because you will have to take out these enemies at the same time or else you will alert them and thus fail the mission. So that's kind of all there is to it in terms of this mission. Just let the sniper do most of the killing in this one. Communicate well with your team and yeah, that's it sadly point and shoot follows the same trend as lower the mv where you just have to let the sniper team basically do all the killing which yeah there's there's not really much else to it the ground team can just stay in cover and whenever someone comes close to them then they can take a shot this is also one of the easier missions for sure slow and low is one of the most irritating missions within gta online solely based on the first section of the mission where you have to avoid the cops the only tip i can give you for that one is just to avoid the main roads and honestly just stick with the alleyways as much as you can it is uh, solely based on rng and sometimes you get so unlucky that they even spawn right in front of you really annoying the position I'm showing off now is where you want to be taking cover after you place down two proximity mines on the train tracks on each of these sides so you can take out the cars as they are spawning in. Another good idea is to throw down some sticky bombs on the roof there so in case they're spawning over there you can just immediately blow them up and then save yourself a whole lot of shooting as well as a whole lot of damage taking. The other excellent position that you can take, and from this one you will be taking no damage whatsoever, is this one right here. Uh, you will still be able to take out some enemies, but the other team will probably be doing the predominant amount of killing. So if you're looking for a sure shot way of getting the damage challenge done, I guess a good idea would be to take turns and complete the mission for a second time. You can also just attempt to have both of you take cover here instead, but regardless the combat section isn't too difficult if you utilize those proximity mines and sticky bombs community outreach is the first of the four player missions with two different teams the bala team as well as the vagos team we'll be going through both of them but honestly both of them will come down to you getting out of your car shooting an rpg at the enemies and then driving off again that's really what it comes down to The final section where both the teams are combined to go to the airfield parking lot is just a matter of everyone just spamming grenade launcher bullets. It is kind of funny actually to see four grenade launchers just being spam to hell <laughs> just see everything explode is really good as for escaping all the angry gang members have a look at the gameplay where i'll be showing you again a cheeky little route how you can get rid of them rather quickly In Desperate Times Call 4, you can actually do some prep work by littering the entire road with sticky bombs. So whenever the next set of enemies spawn, you can just blow those up and take out a large majority of them. But that is not until later, because the first location you have to go through, you can just stand on top of your van and shoot a bunch of RPGs. And that is pretty much it. You probably want to stick to using RPGs in this one sorely because you won't be able to shoot that many enemies, especially if your other three teammates are also shooting RPGs. A very explosive mission indeed. In the second location, like mentioned before, you can blow up the sticky bombs and take out a large majority of those enemies and then finish them off with some RPG shots. At the Richmond Hotel, you want to first start off by taking out all the enemies that are waiting in front of the hotel and then uh, probably the most awkward thing of all time, 
a solo boss who's walking out the hotel and just casually seeing a sticky bomb fling it's it's really funny it's it's just yeah the location in Chumash, you can either decide to just fire a bunch of RPGs that way or use a sniper rifle. Uh, again, RPGs are probably an easier way. Snipers work pretty well too. The boat, take it out with a homing launcher or a regular RPG. That is entirely up to you. And the final one is the helicopters. Homing launcher is probably the best way to go about it here. Obviously, because an explosive sniper or a railgun will affect your accuracy in a negative way. In Funeral Party, you want to start off by going to the gas station and just blowing everything up with your sticky bombs or however you see fit. After the cutscene at the funeral itself, you really want to move your team backwards and not try to take cover behind some of the plants because you're gonna get overwhelmed relatively quickly. So just back up and just try to go for as many one shots or headshots as you possibly can because obviously the rest of your team is going to be shooting at enemies too. So that might kind of mess with your accuracy. This one I would argue is best played twice once on hard without taking any snacks and then a second time on easy so that whoever still needs a challenge can do them. In Peace Offerings, you want to start off by playing the mission on the hard difficulty and focus on no one taking any snacks. Mainly because trying to do this while also going for accuracy or anything like that is just going to result into a bunch of explosive spam and most of the time it's just going to get people killed so instead try to use combat mgs or assault rifles to take down enemies quickly if you see a vehicle though then feel free to use the rpg to make quick work of them but generally speaking you're going to be much better off just focusing on hard first and then doing it for a second time on easy and of course, remember, it is all individual stats, so if one of your teammates is just doing nothing but using a minigun, that's totally fine, just help them out with the next run of the mission where he can go for the accuracy. But with that said, that was it for this one. Leave a like if you enjoyed or found it useful. Subscribe for more. And if you like what you see on the channel, become a member like Chloe, GTA+, Plus, Left Lane Looney, OnlyFans when we do it, Notorious GM, and the Vinewood Car Club. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all. Later.